and this property is a duplex. This side is a four bedroom, one bathroom. And <clears throat> I wanna talk about first how I acquired this property and what the numbers looked like a little bit. So I'm a realtor, uh, licensed out of Orlando, Florida. And a lot of realtors, we get caught up in the day to day of, hey, I need to sell another home. I need to sell another home. I need to sell another home. And when you don't realize you're only as good as your next commission check, you're only employed into your next commission check. So for, if you're a realtor, I advise you get in the game, start buying real estate, start buying the product that you're selling. So the way I found this property was me being a realtor, I have access to the MLS. So I have myself set up on searches. Uh, I had specific neighborhoods that I was always looking in and targeting and stuff like that. This is the winter park area. And so this is one of the areas that I wanted to be because it's centrally located. I want to start growing my portfolio close to my home and start building those relationships. And so that's really good guys. If you can do that, it's not, it's preferred, but it's not a must, right? So me being that I live close by, I was able to, you know, scout this area on, you know, a pretty much a day-to-day -day basis. I was literally like, I go in the MLS in the morning, in the evening, and I'll never forget, I was sitting in a, a, a Foxtel coffee shop and uh, I was on the MLS and I was like, oh shit, this property popped up. And so it was a, a, it was a duplex and on one side was a three bedroom, one bath, which didn't look as this pretty as it is today. And then on the other side was a four or a one bedroom, one bath studio. And I was like, man, this thing's got so much potential. And at the time, actually, it had like ugly checkered floors in here. You know, it didn't look this pretty. And like I said, in the previous video, I did a bunch of cosmetic stuff. So the cool thing about being a realtor is you get to have a license that uh, allows you to get paid on the deal and negotiate on your own self. So I represented myself, got this in uh, 2000, uh, I believe it was 2018 when I got this property. And I'll, everybody knows money was super, super cheap. So I negotiated the deal. I put my initial offer in. Um, I think I offered them like 250 or 255, and we finally settled at 270. I used a traditional bank loan to, to secure this property because money was cheap. Now, also for me, uh, I got paid to buy the deal. I got the seller to co cover my closing cost, and I think at the time I got like a 3.25 interest rate. And so the cool thing about that was me keeping this and house hacking at the time, living on one side, I was able to utilize a primary residence loan. And so a lot of people don't realize you can utilize a primary residence loan to buy a home, house hack it, live in it for a year, and uh, uh, rent the other side out to cover all your expenses. So that's how I got in this property. I got it 5% conventional, freaking killer steel deal, got the seller to cover my closing cost, uh, and got uh, a, a commission on, I think it was a two and a half percent commission at the time. So I was able to utilize that toward my cash to close. So I brought very, very little money to the table. And so with the rehab of the property, I actually uh, ended up paying that out of pocket. I, at the time I wasn't as savvy and I used the money that I had and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna rehab this, this uh, property with my own money. And so when I said back in the previous video, I didn't go crazy, crazy extensive. Um, I just did floors and I did paint, uh, light fixture, stuff like that. So when I bought the property, I had a vision for it as it being a short-term rental. And this is years ago. And I wasn't really as savvy with the short-term rental ordinances and stuff like that. And so um, I kept it on Airbnb for you know the past you know four years. And with the local ordinances, uh, I got a little bit of issues with you know code enforcement. I guess a neighbor, you know, called, didn't like that I was having this property Airbnb, even though that I keep this place top notch inside and out. We don't allow parties. We, we, we keep it very professional. And so this is one of the properties that I had a problem with and I wasn't in the correct zoning, which is okay. And so today I look at the property, I'm like, okay, well, you know, I can sell it. I have options. I can sell it, you know, get the equity out. I can, um, I can uh, do a long-term rental. And when I bought it, I always think of like, what's my worst case scenario, right? If I had to go long-term rental, what's my worst case scenario? Being that this is two units, I was like, okay, well, worst case scenario, I rent this out long-term and I still make a little bit of money. I get leverage, I get appreciation, I get depreciation. I get all these benefits of buying real estate. And a lot of times we get so focused on just cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. We need to start looking at deals 
with a bigger picture. We need to start looking at deals and having a, a, a bigger, you have just a different pair of glasses on sometimes. And I know that's kind of hard to, you, for you guys to see, but when you look at a property, you need to look at all the aspects of why this piece of real estate is gonna benefit you guys. And so one of the big plays for me was at the time, I was very narrow headed and I only looked at properties for one reason, that was cash flow. Now today, I look at for all these different benefits which I have explained to you guys. So now that you know I'm in a transition period and my exit strategy has changed. So my original exit strategy was you know uh, house hack one side, uh, live for free, have no bills, then go into short term rental, went into short term rental on the property, killed it for years, and had some recent problems with uh, code enforcement. Which I want you guys to make sure the first thing you do before you invest in any property, make sure it the the city or county that you're in it aligns with your exit strategy with the ordinances because you have to follow the rules guys. If you don't follow the rules, you're going to have issues to come and then you're going to spend all this money and furniture and all this stuff. And then you're going to be in a point where it's like you get a knock on your door. Hey, you can't be doing this type of business here. So remember, this is a business you're running. You can't just throw it in any residential neighborhood. So make sure you're, you know, following up with your local Sydney County, uh, and getting a call to the coding, uh, the, the zoning department, email them. So you have in writing. I personally like to call in, and also get it in writing, right? That way they can send you everything in writing via email. You have it documented what day and time you spoke to them and you have a copy of the ordinances that you can refer back to. So super important. Anyway, so right now I'm in a, a period to where I am going to pivot into either long-term rental or a pad split. As we all know, pad split is a very uh, a popular uh, exit strategy for a lot of people because affordable housing is uh, tough to come by. A lot of people can't just go out there and afford rents anymore. Now rents have increased so much over the last few years and inflation has increased so much the last few years. So we all know that things are expensive, you know, everything's expensive now. So I'm going to look, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to either do long-term rental and I'm going to, or I'm going to do a pad split. And so I was actually thinking, I was like, you know what? I milked the cow enough. I killed it on Airbnb. I made all this money. I was like, you know, I'm just going to sell this property and get all this, you know, uh, equity that I'm sitting on. Well, when I owned the property back in 2018, uh, about two and a half years after that, I did a cash out refinance. And this is what I talked about in my previous year. So I did a cash out refinance, pulled the money out, my initial investment of doing all the, the rehab and everything. And I pulled all that money out. And so I've done one cycle of cash out refinance. So I told myself recently, I was like, you know what? I really want to sell it. And I know I'd be in a great position if I sell it. But I was like, you know what? Let me just keep it. I'm going to reap the rewards of cash flow. I'm going to reap the rewards of uh, a 27 and a half year depreciation, which gives me about $10,000 on my taxes. I actually did a cost segregation study on it recently. And if I go long term, I'll still cash flow. Pad split, still run a number to so see if it makes sense. But I think this property would definitely be suitable for a pad split, being that there's a four bedroom, one bath on this side, and a one one on the other. So these are going to be my, my exit strategies that I'm looking into next. And so I've decided to keep the property. And what I'm going to do is wait till bank rates get into more favorable uh, uh, terms. And I'm going to do another cash out refinance. So this would be my second cash out refinance on this one property. This is a money farm, guys. And so this is why I acquire real estate because it gives me all these different benefits. And I continue to get appreciation and cash flow and tax uh, uh, 27 and a half year appreciate all these different things. And so when you do that across the board and you have a lot of these properties, it's awesome because it's like, dude, these things are working for you constantly. So I wanted to talk to you guys about this and this is the product that I have here. And so I'm gonna do a, eventually I'm gonna do a, a long-term rental or a pad split. So I'm still running numbers. Guys, don't forget, tune in if you want more content like this, you wanna see more properties that I'm acquiring through creative finance, uh, uh, traditional uh, um, lending. Listen, I got all the tools on my tool belt. I want you guys to be part of this journey. Click the link below, look in the description. Got lots more value for you guys there. So stay tuned.